Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Melanie here from Mel's Inky Fingers. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to find me because I'm late today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was just kind of in my own little world, creating and working on projects and realized, oh my goodness. So I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to find me here. Today I'm going to create some really cute projects using some of our new online exclusives that have launched on May on sorry March 1st. So we are going to use some of these adorable products. Look at how cute these are. I love this tropical leaf bundle. And these dies are amazing and I'm going to show these to you a little more uh, in detail. These are called the Radiating Stitches dies. Hi Polly, welcome, thanks for joining. So hi everybody, welcome, thanks for joining and happy Friday. We are going to take a closer look at some of the online exclusives that launched on March 1st. This is something new that Stampin' Up! is going to be offering. We're going to be offering limited uh, products. These will be exclusive to our online store only. So you can only find these in my online store. You're not going to find these in a Stampin' Up! catalog, but they are amazing. They're so amazing that we had one product sell out in like three days. <laughs> so when you jump on in the online store, you will look for online exclusives. Check them out. And if you see something that you love, don't wait. Oh yes, Polly, it's great. And I hope I give you some inspiration today. Look at what we're going to make. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Hi, Marcy. Welcome. Thanks for joining. So yes, these are amazing. So they may be around for a while. They may be around for a short period of time. I don't know what is going to stay and what won't. Polly, the stitch dies are amazing. I will give you a closer look today. I think you're going to find that they're pretty spectacular. I've used them on both projects today. So it'll give you a chance to see them um, in more detail. So I know that um, we have a new catalog coming soon and I can't tell you if these things are going to be in the catalog or not. I wouldn't chance it. If you see something that you love, you will want to grab them. The other item that we're going to use today is this adorable Rhino Ready Bundle. It's so cute. We are going to make a baby card today using this little Rhino. I love this little Rhino. I think it's so cute. And I'm going to uh, use some of our pattern paper and we're going to make a really cute rhino. So there is one thing that I did not grab and I wanted to. So let me grab that real quick and I'll give everyone maybe just another minute to find us and we'll get started. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about these. So Stampin' Up! is going to be releasing a, a collection of products. They don't necessarily go together, but they may. Um, the first one was March 1st, and the products will be available for a, a period of time. I don't know if they'll be there a long time, meaning months, weeks, or days. So I've already showed you this beautiful Irresistible Blooms collection. I know that we've talked about this and I've showed you some beautiful projects. <clears throat> this is gorgeous and it has a collection of beautiful six by six paper that has this watercolor look with white uh, detail. It's called Hello Irresistible. It's very pretty. And one of my favorite sets of embossing folders ever, these Basics 3D embossing folders. They come as a collection of three. You get dots, hash marks, and this really pretty star pattern. They look like this. Here it's featured with the Starry Sky paper. Aren't they pretty? Hopefully the detail is being picked up with the lighting. I love these. I've used them before. And we were able to order these early as demonstrators, but then on the first, when everything else launched, I was able to get some of the other items that I wanted. So we have the Tropical Leaf Bundle, 
It's a stamp set with a coordinating punch. It stamps beautifully. I love the fonts. And I featured it in this first card that we're going to make today, which really features these leaves. And I'm going to show you a fun technique to make some really cool leaves. The second bundle is the Rhino Ready. And this stamp set is very cute. It has a whimsical feel to it. It has a cute party hat and a little um, party horn, which I absolutely love. Isn't that adorable? And it coordinates with the tropical leaf punch. You have a smaller tropical leaf here. You have some trees. And then you have several outline stamps to cut your rhinos, as well as the grass, the bird, the party horn, and then you have some accent uh, accessory dies, which cut the trees, your treetops. I forget what the names of these trees are. If you know, share with us. Help, help educate us. And then you have this really cute little party hat that not only die cuts the party hat shape, but it embosses some little polka dots and a pom-pom on it. So it's very cute. So we are going to use that bundle in combination with the tropical leaf die to make our little baby card. And I actually have a friend that had a little girl last week, so I created this so I could send it to her and hopefully... She doesn't jump on today or it'll be spoiled. <laughs> then we have these really amazing radiating stitches dies. Now I did make a little reference so that you could see what they actually look like cut. So every die has these beautiful stitch marks that get notched into the paper when you die cut them. Thanks, Robin. Hi, Robin. I haven't heard from you in a while. I hope you're well. So you have a heart shape, a couple of circles, and then three rectangular uh, layer dies that die cut the stitching in it. But then you can also nest the dies. So to create this frame, I nested this with this, layered them together, and ran them through the die cutting machine and it creates this frame. And then I did the same for the circles. I nested this die and this die together and ran it through to get this cute little bubble frame. So you can use them in a few different ways. I've been using these a lot. I think I've made, gosh, six or seven cards already with them. I've been really enjoying them. So when they come, you get the set of six, and this one cuts a full frame, and we're going to use it on both cards today. So let's take a closer look at our projects. So here are the two projects that we will make today. We're going to start by making this pretty tropical leaf. And I'm sorry for the big splotches of Wink of Stella. I'm going to show you how to splatter Wink of Stella but I opened a brand new Wink of Stella, and when I squeezed, I got what I was asking for, which was drops of Wink of Stella, but they were really big drops. So hopefully when I make it with you, they're a little smaller. <laughs> so let's start by making our Tropical Leaf uh, project, okay? So to make that, we're going to use our Tropical Leaf Bundle. And then for additional items, we are going to want a five and a half by eight and a half piece of shimmery white cardstock. And I'm using shimmery white because I'm going to show you a watercolor technique. And I love using shimmery white cardstock when I watercolor. You will also want a piece of shimmery white. I use like a quarter sheet and I just made a big piece and then I'll have extras. And then you're going to want a quarter sheet of granny apple green so that you can die cut the largest rectangular die from the radiating stitches die set. Hi Julie, welcome. I used a quarter of a sheet and I just ran it through and it cut this largest layer, okay? Then you will want a scrap of shimmery white so that you can die cut a label for your sentiment. 
Hi, Joan. Welcome. Oh, thank you for sharing. That helps me a lot, which reminds me I had a little incentive gift that I forgot to grab. So thank you, Joan, for reminding me. Hopefully I'll remember at the end. So I die cut the small banner die from the Stylish Shapes die set. This is one of my staples. I use it a ton. And I die cut, I guess it's the second um, from the smallest. It's this one here, not this tiny one. But it depends on what words you use because if you used, um, for example, the Hello Friend sentiment, I certainly could have used that tiniest one here. But I used the Hello from the Tropical Leaf set. I used this Hello, it's a little bigger, so I used the second to the smallest here. And I pre-cut that out so that it was all ready, ready to go for us. So these are the four pieces you're going to want. So let's fold our card base at four and a quarter. This is again just a standard shimmery white card base and now that'll be ready to go for us. And this is going to go on it but we're going to do a little stamping so I won't adhere it quite yet. So let's turn our attention to our watercolor technique that I would like to show you. I thought this was a fun technique for creating some tropical leaves and adding some interest to our punched shape. So I'm going to use Parakeet Party Granny Apple Green and Garden Green inks, but you could use whatever greens you have on hand. You could even um, bring in Evening Evergreen and Soft Succulent. You could bring in Shaded Spruce, whatever you have on hand, or you could just use two if you only had two. And then I'm going to use my water painter and I'm going to open up I'm going to open up these inks after I squeeze them. So I squeeze them from behind and get some ink on my lid and that's how I like to watercolor. So there's my granny apple green and here's my garden green. Okay, you can see I have a lot. I was doing several sheets of this earlier. So now I'm going to take my water painter and I'm going to give it a squeeze and I'm going to get this paper wet because I want my colors to blend. So I'm just going to uh, blend this paper everywhere with water and then I'm going to pick up, I'm just going to simply pick up some color and add it to my paper. And there's no rhyme or reason. The granny apple green's a little darker, so I'll add some of that in. You can choose a primary color and then add in the rest as accents if you want. And then I'm going to come in with some garden green and I'm just going to add some little areas of darker color. Now I found that after I made these for the first time that they dried kind of light and I had wished that I had a little darker color in it. So I'm going to add a little more um, garden green than I did originally. Now let me take my take your pick tool. Do you see how it's curling? It's okay. It's it'll. I assure you it'll dry flat and I'll show you how that's done. So I'm going to keep coming in and blending this in. I don't want it to be all one color. I want there to be some color variation. And then when I don't want the same color on, hi Sue, welcome. Thank you for joining. I'm just going to take my water painter right on my chamois and I'm going to wipe it. And that will clean that color off. And then you see I have a clean aqua painter I can come back in with what one of my lighter colors I'm gonna just get a little more water down into that and I'm gonna come in and fill in this little light spot here okay so now once you're happy with the color you can take your heat tool if you have a heat tool or you can just set it aside to air dry now, if you have a heat tool as you're heating this, it's going to flatten it out. Hi, Shirley, welcome. I'm so glad you found us today. So as you're using your heat tool, this is going to flatten out like this. 
And if you find that it's starting to curl up like this, you can just start heating it from the underside. But isn't that so cool? Now, I did a piece for you already, and now you don't have to wait for me to dry this, but I'm going to close up all my inks except the garden green because I'm done with those. And I'm going to bring in my dry piece. And do you see how much lighter this is than the one that I made? Because I found that my leaves were a little lighter than I wanted them. Isn't that fun? So now let's create our project. So I'm going to get this out of the way. It did its job keeping my work surface clean here. So I'm going to bring in my Versamark ink and I'm going to do a little bit of stamping in the background of this layer so it's not quite so plain. So I'm going to pull in my Tropical Leaf stamp set and I like this XOXO with the hello. So these are the two sentiments I'm going to use today. And I'm going to take the XOXO stamp and the Versamark ink and I'm just going to kind of randomly stamp it. And you can see it's very light. You, If you don't have Versamark, it's okay. You could use the Granny Apple Green ink, but it will be a little darker. And I'm just going to kind of stamp this so that it pops out from behind my leaves. And I can always come back in and add more once I see where my leaf placements are. But at least it's a start to helping me place all the rest of the images. So let's close that up. Now let's stamp the stems for our leaves so that we have some place to attach those cute punched images. Oh, thanks, Polly. I'm glad you like that. Yeah, it's really easy. It's an easy way to clean your, your um, water painter. So I'm going to bring this back in because I'm going to be stamping <clears throat> off my project a little bit. So this is very long. You can see that it would fill almost the whole length of your card. And I'm going to stamp mine down here a little bit because I don't want my leaves off the top of the page. So we'll see if I'm happy with how that is. So this is being stamped in garden green. So this is one of the same colors that we used to make our background that we're going to punch our shapes from. So now that we have that, let's take our punch and punch three leaves. Hi Melissa, welcome. Happy Friday everybody. So I'm just going to bring this punch in and I'm going to punch out my leaf shapes and you can kind of see where you like the coloring on your watercolored background. I like to catch some variation in my leaves so I'm trying to position it over some really cool color variation and you can save this to punch some more. You can slide it right in with your stamp set if you want. Slide it right in here or you can slide it in the back and it will hold it. This is really easy to just slide. This is just a sleeve. So you could slide it in there if you wanted. And well, you get the idea anyway. And it would keep it there so that if you open it, it's a little easier to get at. Because it, you kind of slide it in there. And then that way, next time you were ready to use your punch, or if you wanted to cut a piece to stamp one of your sentiments, you would have that all ready to roll. So now that I've punched my leaves, I'm going to bring in the veining for the leaves. So you could either stamp your leaves and punch them, or you can just punch the shape. I chose to just punch the shape since I did some watercoloring technique here, but I am going to stamp the veining for the leaves, and I'm going to stamp that in garden green so that it coordinates with the stems for our foliage. So let's come in and stamp that. Okay. And it's easy to line up as you can see. 
and now I'm going to work at positioning these on my project. So the first thing I'm going to do is adhere this to the card base and I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals for that. So again, this bundle can be found in my online store under online exclusives. This is not something that you're going to see in one of the catalogs. This is brand new. It was just released on the 1st. It's very exciting. I love it. I don't know how long it's going to be around, so if you love it, I don't recommend waiting. One of the items on the online exclusives already sold out in like two or three days, so I can't guarantee how long things will last. So I'm going to put this down on my card base like that, and then it's just a matter of arranging the leaves how you want them. So you can arrange them any way you want them. I'm going to kind of center them over the stem. And I'm going to pop a couple of them up, just because why not. So once I kind of get the sense of how I want them arranged, I'm going to put some dimensionals on them. And put them on my card. So let's angle this one a bit and I'll kind of put that little notch right over the foliage uh, stem so that it makes it look like it's kind of bending off that stem. And this one I think I'm going to kind of slide underneath like this. So let's put a little Tombow on it because it will give me the ability to kind of slide that into place. Now the other thing you could do is you could give these leaves a little life if you wanted by taking your bone folder. You could fold it, I already put some glue on there, but you could fold it kind of along that veining and then you could kind of use your bone folder to, to curve your leaves. kind of gives your card a lot of dimension when you do that. I'll just kind of, to make these match, I'll just kind of come in and curl these a little bit so that it matches the one that I just put down. But your bone folder is a great tool for more than just giving you nice creases on your projects. <clears throat> okay. So I have that done, and I'm happy with the placement of those. So now let's create our sentiment. So our sentiment is uh, going to be stamped on a stylish shape banner piece, and I'm also going to stamp it in garden green. And I kind of had this offset a little bit, so that I could trim off the end. So I'm just going to stamp this. And then I'll use my um, little mini paper trimmer. If I didn't already tear this down, I would just stick it down and then trim it with my scissors. And I'm looking at how crooked I put this piece on. Wow. Let me try to fix that. It'll drive me crazy. Okay. So I'm just going to take this and trim off that edge and then I'll put some dimensionals on here and pop it up on my card. Now you could also stamp this on some of this paper if you wanted, but I'm just going to line this up. You could also line it up out here. It's always kind of fun to break up any linear lines, which I like to do. So I'll do that on this one so you can see the difference. And you can see that that little XOXO pops out behind those leaves. I really like that. It breaks up that solid background. Now for embellishments, I'm going to use the Parakeet Party metallic trim. 
historically the in color trims have always gone away uh, after a year they always replace it with something new so if you love these that catalog will be going away at the end of April I wouldn't wait I would start getting those things off your wish list that you think may be going away and don't forget there's going to be a color refresh so we have new colors coming as well so grab your reinkers, start chipping away at getting all those little things that you'll be sad that you don't have once the catalog is switched over all right so I'm going to cut whoops I just snagged my ribbon I've never done that before that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just start over. <clears throat> I use my adhesive scissors instead of my ribbon scissors. That's part of the problem. So let's retie that and start over. All right. So what's a color refresh, you ask? Well, every few years, Stampin' Up! updates their color line so that we have nice, trendy colors to continue to offer. And this is one of those years. So in the new catalog, we're going to have new colors. I don't know how many. I've not yet seen what's saying and what isn't. So all I can tell you is if you have a color that you don't have a reinker for, if you want to continue to use that color for years to come, I would recommend getting an ink refill for it, okay? Then you can it'll you'll be able to use it for lots and lots of years. So I'm going to take my glue dot and fold it in half because it's a little too big for this tiny little knot. So let's fold it in half and then pick up this cute little bow. And I'm just going to set it here at the base of my leaf. You know how much I struggle making a card without a bow, right? <laughs> you, you know it's my weakness. And then I have some festive pearls here. Now, these carried over from the holiday catalog, and I wanted to remind you that they're still available. They're lovely. I love them. Um, so I'm going to put some silver. I have these little strips here. I'm going to put some silver um, festive pearls all around my card. Hi, Ruth. Oh, I'm so glad you found us today. Happy Friday. All right. And there's no right or wrong. You can sprinkle these wherever you want. All right. So I think I like that. And then last but not least, I'm going to show you a fun thing to do with your Wink of Stella. There is so much you can do with Wink of Stella. You can pick up ink and color. You can just simply add shimmer to your project, but I like to add drops to my project. So to do that, I'm just going to make sure that I have some ink in the barrel. And you can see my splotches are really big on this card. It's because it was brand new and I was a little overzealous with squeezing it. But once I know that I have some paint you can see where it says push and push. You give it a squeeze. And, oh, I have paint coming out. You can see the paint in there. And then I'm just going to shake this. And when I shake it, do you see how it's putting splatters on my project? Can you see those splatters? It adds just a fun element of texture to the project and it's really easy to do but I love adding <clears throat> Wink of Stella to my project in many different ways and this is one of them so there's our first project today what do you think isn't that a neat bundle I hope you enjoyed learning that watercolor technique What do you think? Do you like this one? Thanks, Joan. I'm glad you like it. Thanks, Julie. Oh, thanks, Polly. Yeah, I really like watercoloring my punched shapes. I think it adds a fun element to any project. Thanks, everyone. Oh, so many hearts and thumbs ups. Awesome. 
All right, well, let's move on to our next project, which is going to be this little um, Hello Friend Rhino card. And I've made this into a baby card because I needed a little girl baby card this week. Oh, thanks, Shirley. I'm glad you like that. And don't forget about these festive pearls. Now, these can be found in the online store as well. And I'm actually going to be gifting someone a pack of festive pearls. So uh, neck, I will give everyone till next Thursday. If you like and follow all my social media channels. So like and follow me here on Facebook at Mel Zinke Fingers. Like and follow me on Instagram. And I'm at Mel Zinke Fingers as well as my YouTube channel, at Mel's Inky Fingers. So it's easy to find me in all those places. And once you follow me in all those places, come back here and tell me where all you followed me, and I'll be sure to put your name in each time that you follow one of my channels. And someone will be a lucky winner. I'll let you know next week, okay? All right, so this little Hello Rhino. So I'm going to be using the Rhino Ready Bundle from the online exclusives to create this cute project that has the grass and the little trees, these little um, desert trees. I don't know the name of these. My daughter would, she's a biologist and she's all about conservation. So this is right up her alley. So we have all these cute little sentiments in here and I thought this Hello Friend was really sweet to do a baby card and any of these rhinos would be perfect for a baby card. I don't think you can go wrong. I chose this one for the little girl because I love the eyes. I love the cute little eyes on this one. So let me show you how we're going to make this project. So you are going to want a Blushing Bride card base and this is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and one quarter. You're going to want a quarter of a sheet to cut this beautiful radiating stitches background layer and then a piece of basic white to cut the middle sized rectangle again from the radiating stitches dies so that's this die set okay that's this die set then you're going to want a scrap of soft sea foam because we're going to punch some of these great tropical leaves. And then you're going to want a piece of designer series paper. And this is Blushing Bride. It comes from our Subtles 6x6 designer series paper stack. Oh, thanks, Joan. Awesome. Joan says she already follows me. Thank you. I appreciate that. So these uh, family packs of designer series paper are awesome. When you get them, you get sheets in every color in the color family. It's a really great way to have some good basic papers to work with. And each year, generally, in the past anyway, each year they come out with new patterns in the family packs. So they're really fun because each year you can get a whole new collection of different patterns to work with. So... I'm going to use two different patterns. I'm going to have a scrap that I'm going to stamp and die cut the rhino with, and then I'm going to have a piece that I'm going to create a little layer behind this white rectangle with, okay? Then you'll want a little piece of ribbon or white twine or linen thread would be good to put a little bow on the rhino's tail, okay? Then for ink, I'm going to use gray granite. And then soft sea foam and pear pizzazz for greens. So I'm making this kind of soft and muted in pastel colors for a baby. And then I'm going to use my light old olive Stampin' blends, but you could also use your Wink of Stella and pick up pear pizzazz ink to color the grass and make the grass shimmery. And then I'm also going to use the gray granite marker because I'm going to add some little eyelashes on the hippo, which I didn't do on this one, but we're going to experiment and try it on the next one. Okay. And then of course I'm going to use my tropical leaf punch. So let's get started here. So for starters, let's take our card base and fold it along that score line and burnish it really nicely with our bone folder so we have a nice flat layer okay 
Then I'm going to take this and adhere it in place. Now, one thing that I learned, a little tip for using these, you don't want to put liquid glue over the slits in the paper because it will pop through when you push it down. So I'm going to put some right in the center part where it's not going to be on the little die cut slits. Do you see how I kept it towards the middle? so that when I push it down, it doesn't pop through those neat details. Oh, Robin, I hope your mom, I had saw that you had mentioned that and that you were going to be tied up. I hope she's doing better. And then I'm going to glue this right down to the card front like this, okay? Now let's work on our stamped layers, okay? So we're going to stamp on these two pieces. So the first thing we're going to do, and we're also going to stamp, oh good, that's great to hear, Robin. So we're going to stamp in gray granite, and you can choose whichever rhino you would like. They all have a die, an open die that will cut out the shape. The bird is adorable. But we're going to use this little one Maybe I will use this one, but I don't have anything to color the bird in with me here at the table, which would be. So I guess we'll just stick with, with this one. And I'm going to stamp it on the polka dot paper. I think it's adorable. Super cute. You can stamp on your designer series paper. Look how cute that looks. And then I'm going to stamp some grass. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Yeah, it would be super cute to do in blue for a baby boy or purple or gray. You could really stamp it. In fact, I did grab a scrap of gray so that you could see what it looked like. What did I do with it? Here it is. I'll do two and then we'll let you decide which one you want. So where did I put my little rhino? Here he is. I'll stamp it in gray granite and pink, and then you can decide which one you'd like to use, okay? Maybe we'll do this one in gray granite, and then you can see actually two different versions of it. Let's do that. Then let's stamp our sentiment in the gray granite. So I'm going to use this super sweet little Hello Friend, and I'm going to stamp it in gray granite on some soft sea foam and I'll trim that down so that I can use it on my <clears throat> card front. So now let's stamp some grass. So I'm going to take this grass stamp that is in the stamp set and I'm going to just stamp grass all along the front of this die cut rectangle. And I don't want to line it up. You could even come back in and stamp it again if you wanted. But I'm good with that for now. Let's see what we have. So now I'm going to take my light old olive stamp and blends and I'm just going to simply color this. And there's nothing detailed about this. I'm just going to come in. Once you add some color to it, you can see where you have gaps in the grass and if you want to come in and stamp any more, you can. You could do some shading here if you wanted. You could also um, pick up ink with your Wink of Stella as I had mentioned earlier and color these in and make, it, make them shimmery. I'm just coloring all these little blades. There. Now if you want more grass than that, you could come back in with this and do a second layer down lower. I'm going to leave it just like it is. Okay. So now let's take our soft sea foam and add some leaves across the top. 
So I just want this to look like the like the rhino is kind of in its natural environment and it has these little leaves that are that are around it and you could stamp as few or as many of these as you want. And then pear pizzazz coordinates really nicely with it. So now I'll take the stamp for the veining. This comes in two sizes. You can see there's a larger leaf and a smaller leaf and they both have the veining stamps for them. But the punch only punches out the big leaf. But these would be, ah, I dropped it. Yeah. We'll cover it up. You could easily fussy cut these smaller leaves. It would not be hard. So now we have this ready to roll that will go on the front of our card. Now, last but not least, I'm going to punch out a couple of leaves and stamp the veining in these as well. You could do a lot or a little. It's completely up to you. Here's our large vein. So this is not symmetrical. So do you see how it's, it's not really lining up? But if you flip it over, it lines up perfectly. So if you're having trouble lining up your veining to your punched piece, it might just be because the punched piece is backwards. Okay. Okay. So now I have all these little elements and what am I going to do with them? Let's put them all together. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer of patterned paper behind this stitched rectangle. And you have two different patterns to choose from. I think I like the florals. You could measure this and cut this, but I'll show you kind of a cheater way that I use that saves me from having to measure and cut. And again, remember, I'm keeping that glue inside those stitched marks. I'm just going to adhere this down and I just make sure that it's even on both sides. And then I bring in my trimmer and I just kind of line it up and cut and then line it up and cut. And now I didn't even have to take the time to measure but I've created my layer. That's kind of a quick cheater, quick cheater method. So this is going to go here and we're going to add some leaves. I'm going to hide my mistake there. And I need to die cut my little rhino. So let's pull out the ready rhino dies. And I'm going to pull out the matching die here. Here's my little blue stamp and cut and emboss machine. I absolutely love it. Now I I will sometimes use a little post-it note to hold this in place and I forgot to grab it. So hopefully it doesn't shift too much on me. And if it does, sometimes you can kind of slide it and fix it before you actually cut it. Since I had my paper crooked, I'm just gonna back it out so that I don't crumple up my paper. Look how adorable that is. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. 
So I'm going to add some little tiny eyelashes. I hope I don't spoil her. But I'm going to use my gray granite marker. Let's just make sure that I don't have a little dry spot on the end here. And I'm just going to add some little lashes for a little girl baby. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. <laughs> it's very cute. Look. Hopefully that picks up on the... Can you see those little lashes that I just drew on her? She does need a bow. I have come prepared, Robin. <laughs> All right, so you can decide where you want to add these. Since I made a boo-boo, I'm going to adhere my leaf here. And then I'll add that one kind of like that. So let's put this here. And then I'm just going to flip it over and I can trim these off in the back. Now, you could leave them and let them kind of extend on your card. So that'll go there. Or you could even take these and kind of Tuck them behind like this, behind your layer. So you could do a couple different things with them. So let me add this to my card front here. So it's starting to take shape. Let's add our little rhino that's so adorable. So this is from our embossing edition set. I love it for getting perfect placement of my parts and pieces. I like that. So we could do one of two things. We could either stamp another leave. We could kind of tuck this one behind like this. That's kind of fun. I kind of like that. It just gives a little pop. So I think I'm going to slide that behind there. It just gives it a little pop of color and balances out the the cardstock leaves from the other side. So I'm just going to kind of slide this underneath like that. Okay. And then last but not least, I have this cute little piece of white twine so we can tie a bow and do a couple different things with it. We can either put it on her tail or on her head. I chose to put it on her tail I made it small because she's small. You want to kind of keep it in proportion. And then on our green sheet, remember how we had stamped the sentiment. So let's cut this. And I'm going to cut it small. It doesn't need to be very big. And I'm just using my little mini trimmer. You could also use scissors, whatever you prefer. And then let's just take our paper snips here and just cut a little banner end. I want that just a little shorter. There we go. Whoops, I cut crooked. Okay. 
and then I'm just going to adhere that. So I will use a mini Stampin' Dimensional, and you can kind of take this and put it wherever you want. So I'm just going to scoop up one of these and maybe put it about there. I think that's about where I'm going to want to set this. Yep, that's perfect. So let me add a tiny bit of Tombow to the part that's going to be attached to the Rhino. And then I can put that right over here. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. Isn't it cute? It is so cute. So now let's put a tiny little dot of Tombow right there to hold on to this tiny little bow. We'll push that down in place. And then you can trim this however long or short you want it. So I think maybe kind of like that. You could even color this pink with your Stampin' Blends or Stampin' Rate Mark if you wanted. And there's our little baby girl rhino card. Isn't it cute? What do you think? <laughs> Thank you, Polly. Oh, thanks everyone. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? So which one do you like better? Do you like the gray rhino or do you like the pink polka dotty rhino? Now that you see the card all put together, which one? Do you have a preference? Oh, Robin likes the little pink polka dot. I have to say the pink polka dot one is really cute. <laughs> Joan likes the gray. Oh, Paul. Okay, so pink. So we like some of both. Shirley likes the gray. It's so cute. And can you see the adorable little eyelashes? Isn't it cute? <laughs> it's so cute. Yes. So this stamp set didn't have a baby. Didn't have a baby or celebrate in it. So I will use a... You could put it's a great day. Actually, let's do that. It's a great day is, is good to have a baby be born, right? Let's do that one. I like that. Let's... Let's come inside this card and dress it up a bit. So I'm going to take my gray granite ink pad and I'm going to stamp It's a Great Day inside. There you go. And now I have a adorable baby card. So there's our projects for today. Using the new products from our online exclusives in our, um, in my online store. I hope you liked seeing them close up to see what they do. I think it always helps to see projects being made with things to help get a better idea of how cool they really are. So if there's anything that you would uh, like to grab out of this release, I'll have the link to my online store in the description of this video. And don't forget that Friday is the last day to register for my Easter Bunny March class to go. I didn't even grab the, the things to show you. Um, but the Easter Bunny stamp set is in the mini catalog. Let me show it to you. It's very cute. We're going to make five projects using this stamp set that's on page 52 of this catalog, okay? So here is the Easter Bunny stamp set. So you are welcome to add this stamp set on and I will include it with your class kit. You'll get all the supplies needed to make five projects, including the beautiful Awash with Beauty designer series paper from the annual catalog, some pastel sequins, beautiful glittered ribbon, you will make four cards and a treat holder, although one of the cards could be used to hold a gift or a treat as well. And the coolest thing is I'm offering a bonus add-on. If you choose to add on your Easter Bunny stamp set to your class kit, I'm going to gift you a mini class 
which is a set of note cards and a little bag to put them in. And it will include a stamp set as well with that mini class. And that's free. Okay, the Thanks a Bunch stamp set. So thanks everyone for joining me today. I hope you have an amazing weekend. We have hockey playoffs this weekend. Very exciting. And I will look forward to seeing everybody next week. Bye.